Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to be looking at part 3 of my mini-series on object-oriented game development. Once again, uh, starting with the code from the previous video, so if you've been following along, you should have all the source code you already need right there in front of you. Now one thing I did add behind the scenes is I've already created my spaceship.h and my spaceship.cpp. Um, they're both blank, uh, I've just already added them to my project. All right. And we're going to look at basically just how easy it is to work, you know, uh, with these uh, now that the, the, the game object classes are already been made. So in my spaceship.h, I'm going to do uh, pragma once, and I'm going to include my game object.h, and I'm going to create my class spaceship, and this is new. I'm going to do colon, uh, colon public game object. Okay. What this means is that my spaceship is inheriting from game object. What that means is my spaceship is a game object. Everything that game object had, spaceship also has. So in spaceship, I don't need to give it an x or a y or a bound x or a bound y or any of the functions, collided, check, collisions, get x, get y. It has it already. It has all of those. Okay. Uh, so now, all I need to do is focus on adding to my game object, the things that make my spaceship unique. All right, so I'm going to do private, and here are the private things that make my spaceship unique. My spaceship have lives. All right, uh, nothing else in the game has lives, just my spaceship. All right, my spaceship has a score. Okay, that's important. Um, my spaceship also has an animation row. Um, this is unique to how the ship animates. All right, I probably could have tooled this to, to be a little bit better, but I'm just using the animation scheme from our, our simpler game. Because it worked, you know, and you know why mess around with it? It worked. It, it, it was fine. Um, and now my pub public methods. I'm going to have a space ship constructor. There. I am going to have void destroy. Now notice it's void destroy. Now like my game object that had void virtual destroy. All right, I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, then I'm going to have void init. Now, this is going to be one of the only objects that's going to have an init function um, outside of the, uh, the, 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 the basic game objects in it. Okay, um, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, it's going to have a bitmap image as, it, as what it reads in, and I'm setting it equal to null right here. That way, if the user supplies an image, great, we'll have it. If they don't, it'll just equal null. All right, now I'm going to do void update. And void render. All right, and then these are some uh, functions that are that are unique to the ship because the ship doesn't move automatically. So we've got void move up. We've got void move down. Void move left. Void move right. And we've got uh, void reset animation int position. We're gonna have int get lives, which is gonna be inline return lives. Int get score is going to be inline return score. We're gonna have void lose life. I could do void set life and set it equal to one minus get lives, you know, but I'm going to do void lose life just because it's going to then just be lives minus minus and void add point. These are just um, uh, basically score plus plus. These are basically functions that have a very specific simple function and I don't want to muddy it up too much there. Um, and then finally void collide int object ID. And that's what happens when we collide with something. Great. Now I can just, I'm just going to actually just grab all of these, copy them here, Remember over my spaceship.cpp, do pound include spaceship.h, and paste them. Oh, I'm actually going to copy that. I'm copying the word spaceship so that I can just go bam like that. And let me decrease that there. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and start filling this out. My spaceship has a constructor, but I don't want to do anything with my constructor. All right. Um, I don't want to initialize my lives, my score, my animation row here. Okay. I just don't. Um, the reason is, is I'm going to uh, initialize those in my init function instead of my constructor. The reason I'm doing that is this. I'm going to, to create my spaceship. All right. My spaceship is going to be global and it's going to get created almost right away. However, I can't create initialize my spaceship with its image and everything before we run the line of code al init image add on all right or else it won't work so up here inside my my project variable section if i create this ship up here all right which i'm going to do um i won't be able to load images yet so it's important from a structure wise that my constructor is not going to do anything here and i'm going to do everything else instead of, instead inside my init all right. Now in destroy, destroy is simply going to call game object destroy. The reason I have two, the reason I, I declared it here is just in case later I add a feature that needs to have its memory cleared up. All right. Um, that is that is truly the only reason. So, oh, and I forgot to do spaceship destroy. Yep, yeah, that's why that. There we go. Um, this is for the future. Uh, in this example, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I, I really don't have to do it. But like I said before, I'm adding extra stuff for extensibility, so it's maintainable and upgradable. Later on, if I add a feature to my spaceship and I need it to destroy something, the function's already here and it's already set up. Okay. So what will happen is when I call spaceship dot destroy, it's going to come in here and say, and say, okay, game object destroy, and game object to destroy is going to say, okay, let's destroy the image. All right. So it's going to cascade like that. Um, and it's not, it's going to work a little bit differently, but I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, all right. Now for my init, I'm going to do spaceship init, get rid of that semicolon. Now for my spaceship init, I'm going to say game object init. And this is where I initialize the game object aspects. And you see how I said earlier, how I like that to say X and Y, velocity X and velocity Y? There. So now I can see exactly what I need. So my x, my y, these are going to be arbitrary. I just picked 20 and 200. That's the starting position for my ship, whatever. Um, the velocity x is going to be able to move 6 in the x direction, 6 in the right, y direction. It's currently not moving, so it's directions and uh, direction x and direction y are both 0. And the bounding box is going to be 10 and 12. Once again, completely arbitrary. I picked those from the, the previous game, and it seemed to work there. All right. Then I'm going to set ID, and my ID is going to be player. Remember, set ID is a function that was declared in my game object.cpp. All right, so set ID and uh, set oops, alive equal to true. Now, we both know that the, uh, the game object is alive, live equals true by default. So why do I have this here? The reason I have this here is what happens if I finish the game and I want to play it again, right? All I have to do is, I don't have to destroy my ship and create a new one. I simply have to initialize the ship again, and it'll set it back equal to alive. All right? So I'm just reinitializing everything um, to its starting state. So starting state is three lives, uh, zero for my score. My max frame is going to equal three. My current frame equals zero. My frame width is going to equal 46. My frame height and equal 41. These are all things I know from working with this before. Animation columns is going to equal 3. Animation direction and equal 1. And this is new. Uh, animation row, something I declared uh, in this class, and that's going to equal 1 as well. Alright, and then finally if image, because remember we're, we're reading in an image up here, alright, and actually, I don't want that null there. I have it in my in here, and that's good enough. I don't I don't need it here. So if image does not equal null, then I'm going to say spaceship image equals image. That way, I can pass in an image the first time I initialize it, and I do not have to pass in an image the second time I initialize it, right? Because the first time I initialize it, the very first time we play the game, I want to have give it an image. The second time we play the game, it's already got its image. I don't need to give it another one, so I'm going to pass in nothing there, and it won't it won't override what's already there. All right, now 
the update. Just gonna put my spaceship there. And for my update, we're just simply gonna say game object update. Remember that's gonna move my ship around for me. And then all I need to do is balance check. So if x less than zero, x equals zero, else if x is greater than width, x equals width. Before I, I had it so it could only come three 300 pixels out, but this time I thought, not oh, a heck with it. If the player wants to go all the way to the other screen, let him. Um, y is less than zero, y equals zero, and else if y is greater than height, y equals height. So far, nothing too crazy. The updating, the movement's happening automatically, so that's nice. Uh, render, that's something we should all be familiar with. Make that spaceship render. And for rendering, I'm simply going to call my game object render. Now, game object render, there's nothing here. I'm calling it anyway, because maybe in the future, maybe I'll put something here. Right? And the key is to get this to just work, right? Just to make it work. Right? Um, so sure it's blank here now, but in the future there might be something there, and with that in mind, I'm calling. Alright? And then we're going to do the whole if, or I'm sorry, not int, uh, uh, int fx equals current frame time or modulus, and it oops, that's not right. Animation columns times frame width, and int fy is going to equal animation row times frame height and then AL draw bitmap region that's not right that should be L L draw bitmap region and I'm going to draw image FX FY frame width and frame height and then X minus frame width divided by 2, y minus frame height divided by 2, and 0 for my flags. Notice how I don't have to do like ship.image, ship.fx, ship. You know, It's nice because all of these are local inside my ship. So I'm taking all those functions we had before, I'm bringing them into the object. So that's nice there. Alright, and now we can move on down to our, our, our move functions, which got greatly simplified. Um, let me paste that. Just knock these all out. Paste that. Paste that. Just gotta do this all the way down the line. Oh, I don't need to. These are all in line, so I don't need to have those. Great. Okay, so move up. And move up is going to say animation row equals zero. And since we're moving up, our direction y is going to equal negative 1. Our move down is going to say animation row is going to equal 2. And our direction y is going to equal 1. Our move left is going to say current frame equals 2. And our direction x equals negative 1. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm doing this particular animation scheme, go back and watch uh, the, the second iteration of my of the side shooter. Um, I don't remember what part it is off the top of my head, but I explain how the, the peculiar animation scheme of our ship is a little bit different based on the sprite sheet. So if you're wondering what the heck I'm doing here, um, go back and check that out. All right? I'm, it's not, I'm not going to go ahead and re-explain it here. But um, If we move right, our current frame is equal 1. And our direction x is going to equal 1. Awesome. And then reset animation. Alright. If position equals 1, then animation row equals 1 and direction y equals 0. Else current frame equals 0 and direction x 
equals zero. Awesome. Okay. And then finally collide. Collide is to say what happens if something hits us. Alright, we need to know what hits us. So if object ID equals enemy, if an enemy hits us, lives minus minus. So if a bullet hits us, nothing, because we don't care. Bullets can't collide with ships, not in this particular game. Um, if we collide with a background or a border or whatever, um, no, it's not going to matter. All right? So, yeah. Only if we collide with an enemy do we lose a life. Okay? It makes it nice and easy. And if we ever wanted to change that, make other things able to hit us, we just need to write them in here. Just if else this, if else, you know. Um, so there we go. All right. So that is the spaceship. Spaceship's done. Not a whole lot of work. I mean, the game object took care of a lot of it. And a lot of this is custom code for our spaceship. We're not going to need a lot of this for our comets and our bullets. And those are going to be even easier. Right? But let's look at plugging some of this stuff in here. I'm going to come back over to my main, and I'm going to get ready. I'm going to come all the way up to the top, and I'm going to get ready to put that in my globals. So I'm going to say space ship, and that's going to be a ship pointer. All right, uh, spaceship ship, awesome. And then we, oh, I'm getting red squiggly because I forgot. Pound, a couple things I forgot. Pound include game object dot h and pound include spaceship dot h alright there we go now that that goes away just fine awesome okay um, and actually I'm gonna hold off uh, on going any further uh, I'm gonna end right here and then in the next video in part four we're gonna go ahead and get our ship up and running the game um, and then uh, Everything's going to start moving pretty quickly from there. So uh, that will be uh, the next part.